Hey everyone, it's Ryzen, and welcome back to Let's Play Summoner. Well, let's uh, pick up this chest for an Urath Feather that's part of the uh, side quest we got from, I think it was Jerv, back at the uh, temple there, uh, the Urath Temple in Linnell. This is Navasama. This is a very strange quest to be completing. This is the uh, Brother Emond quest. We need to promise that we can't tell anybody. So... You didn't hand him the book. Oh, they're, they're dangerous, evidently. Well, it did make the Laurent guy, they're blind. <laughs> Too bad for you. No, we have to offer to help. Sure. Now, we have a couple different options for this quest. We can either go to Morin, who guards the Great Library, or we can hand it over to Eamon. Uh, if you hand it over to Eamon, you have to tell him that Navasama gave it to you, and she'll get banished. <laughs> uh, I believe you get a different reward for that. I think you get some negligible amount of gold for doing that. I don't care about that, so I'm going to just give it to Morhan for some experience. I think you get more experience this way. I don't think you get any experience if you give it to Eamon, I forget, but... Whatever. Let's, uh... Well, let's ask him who he is first. I grow powerful. Let's give him the book. Now... If you tell him Sama the Novice gave it to you, and then lie to Sama the Novice that you didn't tell anybody, for some reason that gives you an additional 100 experience. The game rewards you for selling her out and then lying to her about it. That is odd. And I have no idea what the hell that was in the background. There are weird audio things with this game. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what you say. I'll just say I promised I wouldn't tell. So let's go back to uh, Navasama. I don't actually think you have to talk to her again, but... I'm pretty sure the quest is gone. Nope, it's still there. You do have to talk to her to complete it. Yes. Morhan. No. And that's the end of that quest. Yeah, if you care about an extra hundred experience, you could do it that way, but... I don't feel like being a jerk over a hundred experience, so... Nah. Although I did just reach level... 11. Unfortunately, I'm not quite level 12, and that's the level I need to be to, uh... Learn blunt weapons for Joseph. I'll be almost there by the time I'm done. I will pick it up at some point in the next dungeon. Usually at the very, very beginning. I have paced this deliberately this way. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of items in here. There's, uh, five, uh, treasures in here. Oops, I think there's one right here. Nope. I forget exactly where they are, but... Yeah, lightning track. This should be an icicle. Yep, icicle track. Should be a fire arrow track right nearby. 
Oh, there's volume 67. There's a Tomo Revive close by. And there's one more thing that we can grab. There it is, the fire arrow tract. That's all the chests in here, or all the treasure. So at this point... Yeah, this, uh... This town's not quite as big, but... Still feels lively. <laughs> they did a good job with the towns in the game. There's not too many of them, but... Well, I'd rather have quality over quantity. But anyway, I want to go back to Linnell. Uh, but I don't want to go into Linnell quite yet. I want to encounter Zane's group first. So, I'm going to... Edit out and meet you back around Linnell. Or when I get into a Grasslands encounter with Zane's group. Either way. I'm just waiting for a loading screen so that I can edit out a better transition here. To get out of here, you have to talk to this guy. He will take you back down to the lower floor, and then... Actually, you know what? I should probably show you... Oh, this doesn't even take you to a loading screen. That's cool. Probably show you how the hell to leave here, because it may not be convenient. Or obvious. I should say. You have to get back on the ship. <laughs> The exit point is right here. Okay. I'll be back. Wow, I just made it all the way to Linnell from, uh, from Iona without a random encounter. You can always tell where Linnell is because it's marked with that little red spot on the map. Why the other towns or locations aren't marked in the game, I don't know. But yeah, just run around in the grasslands and hopefully you'll find Zane. It's a pretty common encounter. Uh, obviously, you have to have Ragnelli's Robber's Quest accepted from Ragnelli. Okay, I'm back, and um, here we are with Zane. Now, you don't have to fight these guys, but uh, I want to. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to. Nice little audio bug there. Oh, he's nice. Yeah, that's... Well, actually, there's no point drawing my weapon. I'm going to holster it when I talk to the guy. So... I'm going to put everybody over here in solo mode. Uh, let's get further up the hill. And I'm going to set up a little ambush for these guys, and I'm going to try and fight them one at a time. I could preemptively cast Protect. Yeah, sure. What the hell. Let's get Regenerate on... Uh, Blackfire, because his HP really sucks. <laughs> but he can still add to the damage a bit, so not too bad. It's better than not summoning him. If you say uh, no, he just fights you right away. Yeah, Ragnelli's a bit of a jerk. So, if you say yes, you just give him, he just gives you the bow, you can hand it in, and complete the quest, and get the useless reward. But, uh, I'm gonna say no so I can fight the guys. And, uh, I wanna start backing off here. If I try to fight them all at once, I will be annihilated. But, it is a good opportunity to work on, uh, Fleece's chain attacks. Oh, another thing I should do is I want to cast Blind on this guy. Ah, uh, no, it didn't work. Come on, he's susceptible to it. I believe the level you are of the caster uh, affects hit percentage. At least it does for some spells. It, it, ha it affects how effective they are, which is odd. I don't know why Fleece wasn't attacking there. That's the problem with Fleece's kick attack. It uh, knocks the enemy back. It is blunt damage, so it is really good. But it knocks him away, and then it kind of interrupts your own uh, combo there. Let's go reestablish Protect. 
Now, I could just leave, because I got the bow, but uh, these guys give decent experience, so... I recommend casting... Well, I'm going to go ahead and cast Fireball for a little bit more damage. See if I can get a blind spell off on this guy. There we go. Blind is really good in the game. Silence is decent, but blind is really good. You can just cripple enemies and bosses, and it's awesome. It's as good here as it is in Final Fantasy XII, if not better. I mean, there's very few enemies that are immune to blind, uh, if any. I can't really think of one right up now. I'm sure there's some, but there are some enemies that are immune to silence. But, not these guys. They're susceptible to both. Not that silence does anything for these guys. Uh, blind essentially renders your uh, hit percentage almost completely... Well, it makes it almost impossible for you to hit. It lowers your hit percentage to an insane point. And it's a very quick casting spell, very cheap, so even when it doesn't work, you can just chain cast it really fast. And its hit percentage is pretty damn good. Now maybe it's just my superstition, but I believe your level does have an impact. Because I, I uh, tend to notice that it hits more often at higher levels. But, I don't know, that could be confirmation bias. I know, like, for the invisibility spell, it, uh, works that way. I'd edit this out, but there's a lot of these dudes, and they're pretty hard. I'll probably kill one more on screen and then edit it out. Uh, speaking of the... Dark spells, uh, there are two other spells for... The darkness uh, category that I will not be obtaining. At level 7, you get uh, access to the invisibility spell, which is almost completely useless. It just makes the, en uh, the enemies have a harder time detecting you. Uh, essentially, it makes the enemy's detection range or aggro range smaller. That is affected by your level. It At level 50 or above, you become completely undetectable. Or so I've read. <laughs> I don't know if that's absolutely the case. But uh, that's what I've read. You're never going to get anywhere close to those levels, though, so... And it would take you forever to reach that point with grinding. The last spell for the darkness category is the death spell at level 10. It's actually a pretty good spell in the game. Uh, it's expensive. It's uh, 20 AP. But it has a pretty good chance of inflicting instant death on just about any enemy in the game that's not a boss. And I believe the higher level you are, the more accurate it becomes. At least that's, again, what I've noticed, but could be confirmation bias. I'm not going to go for it because it's a lot of points to invest. And I have other means of dealing with piercing immune enemies for fleece. I'd rather just use a slashing weapon instead of, uh, you know, casting instant death on them. Okay, so I will take out the rest of these guys. I'll probably just rush them. Two of them is pretty easy, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I forgot to go over Rosalind's abilities here that she starts with. She just leveled up and picked up the fire attributes. But, uh, yeah, she starts with heal. She has heal and cure right now. She has blind and silence, which is useful for her. Light is a hit rate buff on yourself. Can't cast on anyone else. Uh, I use it, like, once. <laughs> Lightning is the bread and butter energy elemental spell. It's the cheapest attack spell, and it's, it's pretty good, especially if they're weak to energy. But, uh... 
it's definitely the weakest of the attack spells, but it does actually, I think, have the fastest animation, because it just directly zaps an enemy. And of course she's got fire uh, that she picked up by leveling up. She'll also get ice at some point. And uh, the reason why I want her with a bow, um, once she, uh, can she equip a bow yet? No, she can't yet. But I want her with a bow, so that way if she runs out of AP, she won't just run up and start meleeing the enemy. That way she'll, her AI script will default to Archer instead of melee in that situation. So she'll still stay at range. Well, if an enemy closes in on her, she won't run away, but... Her, um, let's go back into the LAL. At the very least, she'll, she won't rush in to the enemy, so... That's good. If those guys all swarm you, just start spamming, uh, Meteor Storm, because... That's pretty much the best bet you got for dealing mass damage very, very quickly. And hope that you kill them before they kill you. Let's go hand this quest in. Yes. He gives us 10 gold. Wow. No, actually, 500 experience is pretty good. <laughs> At this point in the game, it's decent, so... It is worth doing that quest, even though the guy's a total cheapskate. Well, let's go talk to Drago. Uh, let's switch over to Fleece. You don't have to, but... It is her quest, so... I figure I should have her do it. Do not talk to uh, Ivan over here. Or the quest for... Crazy Ivan's quest, it's bugged. It will go back into your inventory. Your quest log. It'll eventually disappear because of a time limit, but still, it's annoying. There's no way to complete it again if you get it in your inventory. You just have to wait for it to go away on its own. Oh yeah, if you talk to, uh, Carcella over here... Yeah, you never find out what they were planning on doing with this stupid en uh, ambulance. You get 2,000 gold, which is quite a bit for this point in the game. Now, the Muthavi captain is supposed to be here, but uh, he doesn't show up until after the next area, so... We can't complete that quest. I tried, <laughs> but uh, he's not here. He's on one of the docks somewhere later. We want to go to the uh, marketplace, but I want to... Uh, save up here, just in case I get a game freeze. You never know. Okay, back in the marketplace, we want to head over to Serval, or not Serval, to Mercer the Tailor, and uh, complete the Serval's game quest. Oh, Rosalind. Well, I haven't allocated her skill points yet. I will do that at the end of the episode, I hope. Uh, if I get to level, I think it's 12 with Joseph. Eh, I'm probably not going to get there. <laughs> so I guess I'll allocate them on the next episode. Oh, that's Spearpress the Bookseller. There he is. Yep. We get some silk breeches. Better piece of armor for fleece. Or not fleece, for Rosalind. That's why I didn't buy them earlier. Go ahead and equip those. Three defense, not bad. A light piece of armor. I want to head over to the Crown District. And uh, hand in Pompero's Heirloom. And the Encyclopedia of Eris's Quest. Okay, let's keep going. Got to go over here to hand in this uh, these two quests. And then I'll be heading for the Temple of Urath. I think it's pretty easy to get to the temple. You should not get lost going to the temple. So I'll just go there off screen. Yep, we found the ring. I have gained new insight. Get a Berserker Sword. Uh, let's take a look at that. That's a pretty good weapon, if I remember right. 
Yeah, it has the Empower effect, which is basically uh, an attack buff. So it is much stronger than that attack power says. And it's relatively fast, and I think it's a one-handed weapon? Uh, let's find out. Yeah, it's a one-handed weapon. But, I don't like one-handed swords because it's still piercing elemental. But it is viable. If you're using one-handed swords, I would definitely use that for now. On uh, Joseph, but uh, I'm not using one-handed swords. I mean, I am right now, but I will very quickly not be using one-handed swords. Well, I guess I can equip it for now. But uh, I'm probably not going to use it at all. Here's volume 67. Clever one. We get a garnet that'll sell for a pretty penny. And yeah, Joseph might actually end up... Yeah, because I did that little bit of uh, chain attack farming, he might end up getting the level. If you're a little behind me, you will be able to get a free, I think it's 1,000 experience, from solving a puzzle at the very beginning of the next area. So as long as you're within a thousand, you should be able to. I think it's a thousand. It might be two thousand, but I, I think it's only a thousand. I can look. No, it's two thousand. So as long as you're within two thousand, you should be okay. And the Sister Miala quest, which we're going to complete, will give us 800 experience back in uh, Iona. So as long as Joseph is within 2,800 experience you should be okay uh, to the next level anyway okay we want to go talk to uh, Jerv and uh, someone else as well we got two quests we can advance we could finish off the uh, quest we got from Jerv and then we can advance the sister Miala quest is Jerv up here I forget no he's on one of these staircases You need the uh, Urath Feather in order to complete that quest. Oh, by the way, if the Urath Feather wasn't there, you didn't advance the quest far enough for it to show up. It'll only show up after you've talked to Jerv and Madog the appropriate number of times. I think you have to talk to Jerv, then talk to Madog the Beggar, then Jerv, then Madog the Beggar, then Jerv again, and then it'll show up. Pretty sure that's how it works. I think it's on one of those doors I won't open. Oh, that's a Ramus. That's not who I'm looking for. I think it's right... Yeah, it's definitely on one of these doors I won't open where Jerv is. He is right here. I have gained new insight. Yep. So, they finally believe us. Oh, we get a Ring of Talent for that, which... Do I want to equip that? I believe I do. On Rosalind. Now I have to identify it. Yeah, it gives you plus 10 AP. The higher your maximum AP, the... more your, um, the faster your AP will, will uh, regenerate. She's a monk of Iona. Have to tell him the story. Why not? Oh, so let's give her this necklace, huh? So yeah, we gotta go back to Iona, but before that, let's uh, get the hell out of here, and uh, there's two more quests that I want to hand in. And uh, they are in Old City, so I will meet you in Old City. Oh, that's not the exit. Whoops. <laughs> I prefer to edit out on the loading screen.
and then I'll meet you on uh, in Old City. Probably by the apothecary, I'd imagine. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I'm to the north here of the apothecary uh, shop there. Just head over here, and we're going to hand in the ragdoll quest. Now, you would think that would be a better weapon for Fleece. Unfortunately, it is energy elemental. There are times when it is useful and I will use it, but on a regular basis, no. Probably not. I believe the uh, Dirk is actually, well, the Dirk's almost as strong. Eventually, I will get a stronger dagger, but not for a while. I want to head all the way down to that little southeast corner by the sewer entrance there. So, I will meet you there. Whoops, I meant the southwest corner. Okay, I'm here by the uh, sewers. Do I have any beside tails? I might. Yeah, I did. Okay, let's uh, head over here and hand in the salt smuggling quest. Joseph gonna level up? Probably. Oh, in fact, I know he is. So let's tell Pedrog that we found the salt in the sewers. I grow there we go, power. Joseph leveled up. And I believe that is the last quest I will be completing for now, outside of the Sister Miala quest when we get back to Iona. Yeah, I can't complete that one. Can't complete that one yet. Okay. So, I will meet you back in Iona by uh, Sister Miala there. So that we can uh, complete that quest. Yes, I'm going to have to walk all the way back there. Uh, I'll probably just bypass any random encounters for now. Although, I suggest for you to work on uh, Fleece's Chain Attacks. Okay, so I'm here on the... Oh, it's apparently unexplored. <laughs> That's right, you can't check the map when you're up here for some bizarre reason, but... I'm just above the courtyard here. And, uh, let's talk to Sister... Oh, that's not Miela. She's on the other side here. That's the other one. We can't complete her quest yet. But we can talk to her and, uh, give her the necklace. All right, so all that's left to do now is uh, I guess solve a puzzle so that Rosalind can gain one more level. <laughs> I want her to reach level 10. And uh, to get to the catacombs, we want to head into the minor library. And uh, I'm going to solve a quick puzzle in there, and then I'll allocate my skill points and call it a day. Now that we've got the key, oops. There it is. Yep. Go right into the catacombs. Okay. I just saved in case I screw up the puzzle. But, uh, you could have Fleece just pick this lock, by the way. But, uh, then you won't get credit for solving the puzzle. So, uh... Well, you can still solve the puzzle, actually, even if you pick the lock, which is kind of silly, but... From the entrance, we want to count, uh, clockwise two statues, number eight and number twelve. Or counterclockwise, it'd be statue one and five. Doesn't matter what order you do. So we got one, 
to and here's number eight push that one in and here's number 12 I have gained new info. I forget how you're supposed to know that. There's an NPC, I think, that gives you a hint. Uh, maybe the key guy gave us a hint. I forget, but whatever the case may be, that gave us... Uh, well, that unlocked that little tomb there, and uh, now we can go in. So I want to do some skill development. So uh, I'll take a look at what I want to do here. Okay, for Joseph, he has finally picked up blunt weapons. I want to put... 9 points into blunt weapons, get that up to max level. That will increase my hit percentage with maces and hammers, which will in turn increase my damage with them. Let's get 3 more points into heal, so we can get heal up to 9. And 3 more points into heavy arms. And uh, that's all the points I ever want to spend on heavy arms for Joseph there. Now for Fleece... Let's see, her pick lock is up to 7, her appraise is up to 9, so I want to put uh, two more points into heavy arms, get her heavy arms up to 6, and then one more point into backstab, or one point into backstab to get her backstab up to level 2. I am not going to go any higher than, oh no, I will eventually get one arm, one point into heavy arms, but not for a while. But uh, for now, Heavy Arm 6 is all I really need. She doesn't need that last point until very near the end of the game. And uh, I also want to put 3 points into Trip. Get Trip up to level 4. Because Trip will... Well, it increases the percentage of Trip working. Combined with Backstab, it is obscenely good. So that's the way to go. For Rosalind... I want to put three points into fire. Get fire up to level four, so that way I can uh, have Meteor Storm for her. And uh, then I want to put six points into Holy. Get Holy up to level seven. And then save the last three points. Sorry, I uh, screwed up an explanation there. Uh, anyway, Joseph picked up the Vitalize spell. It's the Heal All spell. Slightly weaker than the Heal spell, but it heals everybody for 10 AP. It's really, really good. It's also faster than the Heal spell. So if you really need to heal one person really quickly, you can spam Vitalize a lot quicker than you can heal. Unless you're using the Chain Casting trick, which I'm banning. And uh, Rosalind picked up the Faith spell. I don't need both characters to have Faith. Just one character is good enough, and Rosalind has points to spare, so I figure let's have her pick it up. It buffs your magic resistance for the whole party. Uh, normally, I think your magic resistance is two times the character's level, but with uh, Faith, it becomes four times the caster's level. So it's pretty good. Not as good as Protect, but pretty good. Um, protect... I want Joseph to cast that over Rosalind because Joseph will have more defense than her. So it'll have a greater impact than if uh, Rosalind cast the Protect spell. And I think Faith for some reason works better when Rosalind casts it. I forget exactly, but whatever. She also picked up the Ice the ability, but I want to wait till I get to level 11 before I allocate points into it. But uh, Icicle is your bread and butter. Ice damaging spell. Ice elemental uh, costs one more AP than fire arrow, but it's essentially the same thing. I think it might be a little stronger. There is one more spell in the holy attribute that I will not be getting. It is the curse spell. It is actually a pretty good spell. It uh, debuffs everyone's or debuffs the enemy's uh, attack power and magic resistance rather significantly. The higher level the caster the more effect it will have. Uh, in fact, I think at like level 20, the enemy will have no magic resistance if you cast that spell. But it just costs way too much AP, and I don't want Rosalind at melee range to begin with, so... And I'm certainly not going to put that many points into it for Joseph, so I'm, not, I'm going to pass on it, but 
it is worth considering. But anyway, I want to give the crossbow over to Rosalind. And for Joseph, I'm going to give him the War Club. Curse is an AoE around the caster, by the way. So that's why Rosalind would have to be at uh, melee range to use the spell. And uh, I think that'll do it. So next time, we'll uh, explore the catacombs. This is Ryzen. Thanks for watching. Take care.